Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Harlequin Coho here, and I think I'll start this off with an apology because I know I'm going to piss a couple of people off with this one, but I love this replay, and uh, I hope you will at least appreciate its its more subtle details. So what we're going to go over here is the infamous pile spam strategy, and you'll notice right away here, Von Mechacon is going to be our evil dark side German player who's going with this strategy for today, and uh, you'll notice that there are eight army item slots available, and six of them are currently being used for these pioneers. Uh, he has Panzer Fausts. Uh, they have 15% further range. They have cheaper by 20%. Uh, increased sight range by 20, squad health by 16, and rifles. So lots and lots and lots of upgrades for these field pioneers. So uh, what is a pile spam, you ask? Sit back and enjoy. You hate pile spam, you say? You think anybody who talks about this strategy and proliferates it should be dragged into the street and shot in front of their parents? Well, uh, I hope you don't think that. But either way, uh, this is a strategy. It's out there. You should know how to identify it and uh, know what its uh, hallmarks are and that sort of thing. But as for as for how exactly to beat it and what to do and what works, I'm going to leave that for the metagame for the time being because uh, I want to see some more replays of uh, people fighting against this sort of stuff. So let's take a look here at, at Von Mechacon's abilities and we'll see that he is playing as a Blitzkrieg player. Uh, infantry Pillage, Flares, Rocket Barrage, Manpower Blitz, and assault reinforcements. That is pretty good. It's pretty good. I like some of this stuff here, but honestly, it's just a strategy that seems to win it. He uses a lot of this stuff and uses it well. I could very easily see this as a defense, uh, as a defense build too, and uh, even maybe a little bit of terror could work pretty well for that anyway. So let's take a look at his opponent today, Valen uh, J S L O. Valen J S L O S L O. I'm just going to call him Valen for now because uh, that seems easier to pronounce, and amongst other things. So Valen is, uh, you know, he's he's got a pretty pretty standard looking infantry sort of attrition-y kind of build going on here. He j right away jumps into a forward racks in this house, the infamous house at this crossroads uh, that's so often garrisoned by machine gunners and things like that. Uh, we'll see that he does have. Accuracy, 20% uh, sight range, and uh, damage by 3%. You know, the kind of the lesser rifleman upgrades, but they're there. And uh, he does have the forward barracks, ranger reinforcements, infantry attrition, and artillery strike. So definitely going for the, the cheesier... Uh, style of attrition kind of rifleman play there. But hey man, strategies are strategies. So I will I will leave the rest up to arguments and heated debates and forums and balance testers and you know threats to game casters and all that sort of stuff, you know. But so let's take a look and just see uh, where Von Mechacon is at at the moment. So I'm gonna look at his army and you'll see that his army consists of six pioneer squads. And uh, they are fairly like I said they are fairly pimped out with uh, army items. And uh, gonna put a lot of pressure out here. Uh, he also got field pioneers, by the way. Is uh, they can uh, they're level five, but they can do a bunch of stuff. They can construct a they can construct things faster, cap faster. They can build crippling traps, things like that. Build stuff for cheap. Uh, good good general unit there. And I suppose if you're gonna have pioneers everywhere, you might as well throw them into the mix just for fun. And you'll notice that he was right off the bat. This is why I like this replay. Not because it was a challenging game. It's fairly one-sided, but he really kind of distills down the core of this build. And you'll see that he goes ahead and builds an observation post here and an observation post here, giving her 26 munitions and 18 munitions. Huge, huge munitions advantage. And uh, he's gonna capitalize on that early on because uh, he basically just wants flamethrowers and he wants landmines and wants the ability to fire Panzer house if needed, that sort of thing. So uh, pretty much here comes the next part of the strategy, which is just get a Kampfkraft center out soon-ish. And that's pretty much the only building we'll see for almost the entire game. Um, I've seen this done in multiple ways. Sometimes it turns out you can get the timing pretty well if you build this thing right off the bat and then build Vet 1 right away. But uh, that's kind of less interesting because I think one Vet, vet 1 Pioneer is much less effective than having, you know, six or seven already in the field and then getting Vet 1 and then working your way up to Vet 3. But that's going to be kind of the general strategy here is Vet 3 Pioneers with lots of army items that benefit Pioneers and then uh, some a little bit of uh, support here from the commander ability. So you'll see Infantry Pillage is going to be used frequently in combination with uh, these big blobs of Pioneers that come in. And here we have our first kind of major encounter here. Flamethrowers, lots of lots of focus fire going on from all of these uh, pioneers out here. Uh, Rifleman Squad starting to take some serious casualties. You can see pretty pretty decent micro. He's retreating the ones that are getting really wounded, and these flamethrowers are just you know at close range, 
doing so much damage. Look at that! Look at that damage! We got an infantry pillage uh, active. Unfortunately, I think he activated just a second too late and uh, didn't get any money for any of that. And uh, everybody else is backing out. But that entire rifleman squad was just eaten alive uh, by this amorphous blob of uh, pioneers here. So this is about as close to uh, a zergling rush as I think uh, Koho gets um, in terms of uh, making analogous <laughs> st StarCraft strategies and that sort of thing. So uh, we'll see that uh, we are getting, these riflemen over here are getting healed by the proximity to their forward barracks and that's good. Now let's take a look here at Von Mechagon. He's at about 50 munitions. He starts fighting here. We're going to get some flamethrowers and BAM! He goes ahead and just activates uh, all of this, all of this healing here for his uh, pioneers, because their ability cost has been reduced by so much. He can just go ahead and just fire that off, uh, get their get their healing packs all up and running, and uh, so 20% reduction to his munition cost. So he's able just to get them all healing. They slows them down a little bit, but just look at that. Look at how invulnerable these guys are, or at least not quite invulnerable, but they can really, really stand up uh, on their own against even bar fire and, and that sort of stuff. Because uh, we can see that the riflemen do have the Browning Automatic Rifle upgrade. The barracks having been built a little bit later for upgrades and that sort of thing. So, uh, they're, you know, they're retreating right now. But I think it's more that they're attacking over here. They're not really retreating from these riflemen. They just decided they would come over here and just kind of destroy these. Uh, probably advanced defense engineers. Not really sure which ones those were. Uh, but in the meantime, just going to go ahead and cap this point. And you'll see while I was talking, we're already at Vet 2. So he's pretty much just pouring his money into either non-stop pioneers or uh, pioneer upgrades uh, in in veterancy. So uh, Vet 3 soon to come as soon as he finishes you know, upgrading his uh, Reich headquarters and all that sort of stuff. But you know, solid map control and I love this strategy. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's the most balanced thing in the world. I'm not saying everybody needs to do it. I'm just saying I, I appreciate it from sort of a from a distance because of its aesthetics. It's it's a very consistent strategy. It's single minded in purpose and it flows really well together. Uh, I think it's a balanced strategy, not in the sense of the metagame being balanced, but it's balanced because look at this. Look at this. Oh, so brutal. Just these multiple flamethrowers. And uh, the healing packs, they don't even care about their slow movement speed. They just kind of shrug off all of this damage and just surge forward. Uh, stopping a little bit over here. But what I was going to say is I like it because it works well against a wide variety of things. You can see infantry pillage is now open. Very, very good against uh, infantry. Really good against riflemen. Just kind of burning riflemen alive. Uh, the focus fire from the rifles and the flamethrowers uh, in combination with the infantry pillage. Really, really scary. Scary effective. Um... But, uh, it, you know, with the ability to have multiple Panzerfausts and a lot of munitions and a cheap Panzerfaust with extra range, you could do some serious damage to an early Greyhound, uh, early Jeeps, that sort of thing. It works well against all of that. Pretty much the only thing it might have a little bit of trouble against would be things like Shermans and stuff like that. But honestly, with this kind of map control, you're probably, you're, you're probably gambling on the fact that you're never going to see Shermans. Uh, because you're going to control all the fuel and that sort of thing. And then really, all of these commander abilities are a bonus, which is why I think I'd almost rather like seeing this as defense, because there are so many pro-infantry abilities uh, in the defense pool that you could use in terms of like for the fatherland and recoup losses just to keep this really, really cheap and effective. Uh, here he goes again, firing off the medic ability, uh, the meta packs, and uh, healing up, just kind of toasting away, toasting all of these riflemen. Oh my god, look how suppressed they are, look how... It's just so brutal, 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 brutal. So, you know, in StarCraft, there are some strategies that are just gimmicks. And I literally mean they're gimmicks because they rely on your opponent being bad. So if you cannon rush somebody, for instance, you're relying on the fact that they won't notice that you're going to, you know, build guns in their base, basically. If you're not a StarCraft fan, it's okay. The, the analogy is still the same. Though. You're relying on the fact that your opponent is going to miss something about your strategy, and you'll be like, ha-ha, and just, you know, attack him when he doesn't expect it or something like that. Um, this is not that kind of strategy per se. This this is a more flexible, more well-rounded strategy. This strategy works even if your opponent knows it's going to work. You know, even if your opponent knows that's what you're going to do is what I meant to say. And since during the loadout screen when you begin this game, they'll see that you have nothing but army items that benefit, uh, you know, Panzerfausts and that benefit your pioneers and all that. And that'll kind of throw up a red flag that you're already doing this. So you can kind of see on the loading screen just by looking at their army items that this is going to be the strategy that you're, you're going to have to fight. And in spite of that, that, it's still a good strategy. There's no surprise element to it. You can just do it. So, uh, again, I'm not I'm not speaking at all to balancing this strategy or, you know, how good or bad it is or if it should be banned or anything like that.